Welcome back to our series about Storyist. In this video, I'm going to show you the, give you a quick overview of how Storyist works and explain the philosophy behind Storyist. Uh, let's, in fact, let's start there first. It, what isn't so good about programs like Word and Pages is the fact that both your writing, your content, as well as the formatting is kind of interlinked in one single document. And when it comes to giving it to your publisher, if when it comes to uploading it to the marketplace you want to publish it, then ultimately you're going to end up in a situation where you're going to have to change the page formatting, you may even have to change the fonts and that kind of all interferes with the what you've just written. So it's that's not that's not that's that's messy. That's just not good. And um, programs like Photoshop or Premiere or even Apple's Xcode application, they have a different philosophy. So in Photoshop, for example, you 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 can work on a single image, but that's not the project file that the application itself saves. So uh, imagine you had you're compositing a photo out of two photos, and you're creating a like whatever a headline for it. So then that's kind of three elements that you have there, and you're not saving that as a single JPEG image, you're saving that as a Photoshop file, which then keeps track of those images plus what font you're gonna plaster on the front page for the cover or whatever. And then when it comes to sharing the output of that with somebody, you hit something along the lines of file export, and then a JPEG is generated for you, but if you want to make any changes, it's kind of a non-destructible workflow that you've got there. And the same happens with a video application like Premiere or Final Cut, where you have several video clips and several dissolves and several whatever graphic tricks that you want to have on your final uh, timeline, but you don't share that file with people. You say export and then the program renders out um, the MOV file or an AVI file and that is what goes up to YouTube or gets shared on Facebook or whatever. And this is something that doesn't really happen with Word and Pages. They kind of, they intermingle both the formatting as well as your text into a single document. And this is where Storyist uh, greatly differs. You can write, you can write in A format, in like a, like an A4 or US letter page format with whatever font you like. And when you're ready to create either an ebook version or a PDF for your printer, then you hit something along the lines of file export. And that is what generates more or less a kind of a throwaway file that really is only used for that purpose of sharing it with other people. But it does not interfere with your document that you're writing and that is very important and it's uh, greatly helped me out because what I print here looks completely different than what gets uploaded to Amazon in a different font with different margins and different page set and all that so that is one great thing that, that stories does so that's kind of the philosophy behind it stories allows you to use the equivalent of little post-it notes and put them on a cork board and if you're not happy with the order of them you can move them around and when you've written text that's kind of associated with them then that text moves as well no matter how large the document is so let me show you how this works when you start stories it comes up with this little welcome dialogue here we on the right hand side you see documents that you've recently opened and on the left hand side you can also either open the getting started guide this has a lot of text in it for you to play with and it can always be brought back from here you can visit the stories website or you can create a new stories project so that's what i'm going to do now um, this is how it starts there's a template chooser for you here Blank will create an empty document. Novel will create one with several um, files and folders already in there. Same with screenplay and stage play. Let me start with a blank document here just to show you how, uh, how, the, how the overall process works. When you do that, all you get is an empty project, an untitled project, and you get an empty images folder. We'll worry about that uh, in a later part. So let's, let's not um, look at images right now. So uh, the way this works is we need to have one document in which we can write. So there's several ways of doing that. My favorite is always to click the plus button on the bottom here and say create a new text file. And with that, we get several templates. I'm a nonfiction writer, so I'm going to click the novel template here. And I can call it something. So I'm going to call it uh, maybe test manuscript. 
there we go. And uh, this has got this little triangle, this disclosure triangle here. This is on the left hand side, this is where all your files live. So you can drag in things from your desktop like images or other text files that you've already worked on in another application or you can use file import for that and that'll all end up in here. So those files are all saved together with the stories file, which is a .story file, by the way. And under the hood, it's more or less just a zip file that, that zips all these documents together. So you can delete the original stories, will make a copy and save it inside that file. And um, uh, then you can start writing in the middle, obviously, just like you're used to from so many other uh, writing applications. And on the right-hand side here, you have the so-called inspector. So this is, uh, I believe this is called the file inspector and this is called kind of the formatting inspector. Uh, I believe if you hover over it, it'll tell you a yeah, format inspector. That's the guy in the middle here, the little P icon. And then you've got uh, this thing here and that is another inspector, which is called the, hello, file info inspector. There we go. So you can uh, test manuscript is, is the same as what you've given the file here and uh, you can give it a certain kind here as well. We'll worry about that later. So the most important thing is the format inspector here. And just to bring that to your attention, there's also another little thing which is called the comment inspector. And I haven't, uh, I didn't know where that was for quite a while. So you can make comments in your text by literally just highlighting a passage. And then uh, if you've uh, worked on it and you think, oh, I need to make some corrections there, then you can head over to edit, insert, comment and that gives you the equivalent of a little kind of yellow post-it note and uh, must take care of this. And then uh, this is a comment that'll, that'll be with many others in the sidebar and it'll be highlighted in yellow here. And when you go there and you have a very long document, you can just go there and then it goes, it smooths you straight to that section. So that's how that works, that's how comments work. And of course you can delete them from here and then they're gone again. On the very top, you've got the, not only the title of your story, when it says hyphen edited, that means this file hasn't been saved. So you've made some changes since it was last saved. We'll talk about saving in a moment. Um, Stories is very clever in automatically saving your work ongoingly. It also saves versions of your work. So in case you uh, wanna either do that manually or automatically, Stories will take care of that. Uh, this is kind of the status bar, I guess. So currently we have four words in our document, either that or if you've selected something inside the document, then it shows you how many words are currently highlighted or selected. Um, these are some shortcuts it shows you. We'll talk about that later. And this is the current formatting of wherever your cursor is parked. So right now I've got it up here under chapter one, and that is of course a chapter title. Uh, these are the outline styles or the kind of the, the, the styles that, that are currently defined in this document. And if I park my cursor down here, this would be like a text section and it tells me that's the section text. But I can change that from here and we'll talk about that in a moment, how the writing process actually works. Speaking of which, let me just expand this section with a bit of text. I'm not gonna copy anything in, I'm just gonna uh, type lorem followed by the tab key and that inserts some dummy text in there. I can even do that one more time. If I type lorem and hit tab, then I just get some text. And uh, this is a nice little writing aid that is in there. It is uh, something if you find yourself putting something into your documents quite a lot, then you can define these things. Let me show you where that is actually. That's under storiest preferences. And under the preferences, you have the text editing tab here. And at the bottom, you've got these text snippets. So this is the lorem snippet that I've just used and that's in there by default. So the tab trigger is the shortcut that you type followed by the tab key. And if you do that, then this long piece of text comes up. So that's how that works. There are some other predefined things in here, sort of uh, he said and she said, that's good for fiction writers and uh, they work a little bit differently. I might as well show you that while I'm here as well. It, uh, the, the trigger here is HS and SS for the first two. And when you do that, then uh, you can let me do that after this thing. So HS tab, and then it brings up something like this. And it means uh, you can now over type these little blue bubbles. So you can say, hello, uh, he said, um, and then you can keep typing, keep typing here. And the same is true for SS tab. And then you get the same with she said. 
and you can say uh, I don't know if you were a fiction writer she said reluctantly there we go so this these are the little shortcuts here but uh, I'm doing that so that I can show you what uh, what the navigational options are so we're going to talk about the writing tools in the next chapter so um, right now what I'm looking at here is uh, the full page which in my case it's set up to US letter format if you're in Europe you can set that up to be um, a4 format of course and uh, that would happen under file page setup and this is the, the standard dialog that you know and love so in my case it's US letter or you can use um, something like A4, A5 whatever your letter size is you can even um, create your own custom sizes for them I'm going to leave mine on US letter because it matches what comes out of my printer so if I want to print something out this is this is perfect I also like the way this um, uh, the font is set up because it reminds me of a typewriter so it's very exciting if you want to zoom in you can do that with gestures on your trackpad and you can zoom out just as well so you can see the full page here this by the way is called or oh, this is of course the header here you can double click in that and then change that if you want uh, this is currently showing me the actual formatted page and uh, that is helpful if you keep typing depending on how how uh, zoomed in you want to type you can do that but uh, something that does happen often or it kind of happens to me and I didn't know that that feature existed when you come up to here and you keep typing then it has this big kind of page gap in the middle and you've got the header and sometimes that's just a little bit because it's a little bit in the way while you're while you're deep in your thoughts and you want to just get put put uh, words on paper and so what you can do instead is head over to view layout and then you can switch over to draft and when you do that the page formatting disappears so all you have now is a long piece of text and uh, you can insert lorem as many times as you like here and it will just be just text so there's never any um, any page break that you'll see here. It's just one massive long piece of text and all you see is your chapter breaks and your section breaks. This is what that little uh, little guy does. And we're going to talk about all these things in the next section. But yeah, this is, uh, this is how it works. If you want to see the page formatting, head over, make sure your cursor is parked somewhere in the document. So if you, if you just click on this here, for example, and you head over to uh, view layout, then this menu is going to be grayed out. So you have to uh, park your cursor in here somewhere and then view layout is going to be enabled and draft is this without the page formatting page layout will show you a single page and you've also guessed it if you head over to view layout page layout two up that will show you two pages at the same time and this is nice when you're editing a document or you want to see how the PDF that you're creating flows so that's very helpful to see how two pages side by side will look now there's also something that uh, right now you may think well actually you know what I like about Word is this, this immersive full screen mode and yeah me too I do love that as well I have to say let me just bring that back to a single page layout here it is something that I do enjoy about Word the distraction free totally clutter free writing experience on your on your laptop on your MacBook is just text nothing else no status bars no nothing and stories of course has that and it's as easy as switching into full screen mode for that so that's this little guy here the the green little arrow if you click that then all you have is text and that is very exciting if you do this and you see nothing other than text that's really cool and you can combine that of course with the with the draft mode so right now we can still see where the page ends and we can see the margins if you don't want that you just hover to the top of the screen you head over to view layout and switch over to draft and then all you get is literally text from side to side of your screen don't try that on your 27 inch mac monitor because that's just a little bit overwhelming but on 13 inch macbooks 15 inch macbooks it is really superb it's fantastic now full screen mode doesn't mean you don't have access to all your other tools you do all you need to do is hover with the cursor to the left or the right hand side of the screen and that's what where your file inspector and format inspector will appear and of course at the top of the screen you have all the menu information and all the all the other bits and bobs that you want and to get out of it either you hit escape or you can hover and just click that little green guy again and then it'll go back into windowed mode rather than full screen mode 
There's another thing that's kind of interesting, that's how to set up workspaces. So this currently is a single editor view, but you could have another uh, document in here. Let's just create one text file. And in this case, I'm just gonna go for a notebook entry here. In the notebook entry, the, the formatting is a little bit different, but uh, you, you see the point nonetheless, it, it does, acknowledge formatting. If you don't want this to be pasted in, you can also go uh, paste and match style, and then it'll come up with, uh, with in this case, it's Helvetica. So you can um, you can change the font. We're gonna talk about that in a minute as well. There's font and formatting is another, there is another kind of topic for another video, I think. This is just like how to, how to get around um, Storyist here. So um, yeah, notebook, and this is another, um, kind of this, I've got two documents here now. You've got, you can have as many documents in your project as you want. And if you want to ever see them side by side, this is where the side by side editor comes in handy. This is this little icon here. Uh, you either have a drop down menu, which means you can either hide the project view from here. So then this is the, the project view is now gone. Project view is gone, not file inspector. There we go. Or you can bring it back like this. So it's a little bit like, you know, get, reduce your clutter here. But it also has another option. It has the single editor view, which is what we're currently using. And then it has the side-by-side -side editor views. And that allows you to have two documents open at the same time. And uh, so on the left-hand side here, I could now click in here and uh, look at my um, notebook entry where I may have some notes about my character or about a setting or about a plot point that I want to write about and on the right hand side depending on where I park my cursor uh, this will change between each of them and those work in full screen mode as well so I still have my my two documents open at the same time you can also, if you're navigating a longer document, you can have the same document open in either view, just at different positions. So this is kind of cool if you're referencing something from the beginning and now you're kind of 50,000 words further back into your document and uh, writing on a different chapter and you're referencing something from the first chapter and you're thinking, what did I say there? Then I like it that my the same document that I'm writing on is open in another tab or in another kind of you know, viewport, if you want to call it that. And then you can have a look at that how did I word that what did I write there and then you can keep writing and on the other side so this is a very helpful way of working and um, you can also have the same as a stacked editor view so this is the the idea is the same but you have it at the top and the bottom so uh, it depends on what screen size you have and what uh, what you prefer there. you can also um, create workspaces by yourself. I've never looked into that, but that option exists. I just wanted you to be aware of that. So this is how you uh, switch between them. So single editor view, and then you've got the side-by-side -side editor view, which is, uh, which is handy for, for me. And I think that about wraps it up for our brief overview of how Stories works. Let's get on with the writing tools and uh, how to actually put words on paper and make them look handsome in the next video.